So as we get even closer to the launch of the Galaxy S20 series, I wasn't expecting any more information about these phones as we know pretty much everything we can, but another new feature came to light today as well as some other news. As we know, Samsung are improving the hardware in these phones, bigger camera sensors with bigger pixels, which means overall colors, dynamic range, and just the quality of both photo and video should see an improvement. Features like improvements to live focus, pro video modes, and also single take photo are all coming with the update to One UI. But today, another trademark filed by Samsung also was revealed called Super ISO. This is to do with the camera, and looking at the name, it's actually quite self-explanatory. ISO or ISO is the name given to the digital aspect of cameras that can change the camera's exposure. Along with shutter speed and aperture, ISO controls the way an image is exposed using digital image processing. If the picture is very well lit anyway, then you won't need virtually any ISO whatsoever, but the darker an image becomes, you may need to turn up the ISO higher and higher to brighten up the image to get something usable. The problem with that is that the higher the ISO, the more digital brightening that you're using, and so the image can become grainier. And there's also a limit to the amount of ISO that you can actually put on an image. Super ISO will definitely be a reference to the fact that these new Galaxy phones phones will be able to use a much higher ISO number than ever before, meaning that you should be able to pump up the brightness of extremely dark images. Huawei have always taken pride in the amount of ISO that they have in their camera phones. For example, the Mate 30 Pro is able to go up to a really massive 512,000 ISO. To put that into some context, the Canon EOS R, which is a very expensive full frame mirrorless camera, only goes up to 40,000 ISO natively. We don't know the new limit of the Galaxy S20 phones, but considering Samsung have trademarked Super ISO, we can expect it to be pushing up much higher than this. This should be achieved not only by the new cameras on board all of the phones, but also because of the new image processor in the Snapdragon 865 or the Exynos 990, depending on your market. We also got confirmation today that March the 6th is the official first sales date of the Galaxy S20 series. I think this is in America, but depending on which market you're in, it might be different. There were also lots of benchmark results coming out of Korea today, proving the leaks were right regarding the switch from Exynos chipsets in that market to the Galaxy S20 series now using Snapdragon chipsets. The scores came in at above 900 for the single core and around 3200 for the multi-core, which shows about a 20% improvement over the 855 and also is a big improvement over the initial test results we got from earlier devices running pre-release software. So that shows you just how much software can change the results of these, even though the hardware is the same. And recent smartphone sales figures show that Samsung is still top of the pile just in terms of smartphones sold. But Samsung have made it clear that their future plans lie with more and more foldable devices. We're gonna be getting the Galaxy Z Flip at the same time as the Galaxy S20 series. But according to some leaks, it will be as early as Q2 this year. So that's April to June, we could be expecting the successor to the Galaxy Fold, the Galaxy Fold 2. This is expected to come with a better design all around, a bigger screen, the use of ultra thin glass instead of plastic on the inner screen, plus taking the 108 megapixel sensor from the Galaxy S20 Ultra. It is also rumored to come with S Pen support that would fit in one of the bezels. I think that's a really great idea, especially for that kind of device, but of course, Rumors at this stage are still very, very early. Subscribe for the latest tech news and videos. That's it for now, but I'll see you in the next one.